Hi Grade Nines and welcome to 8.3 which is the final section in our unit that comprised both Unit 7 and Unit 8. Uh, today we're doing uh, properties of angles in a circle. We are, um, we're looking at a couple new terms here today and I know how much you love new terminology but it is important and you will see it uh, several more times between Grade 10 and Grade 12. So here we go. A, a section, any section of the circumference of a circle, now remember the circumference of a circle is the measurement all the way around. It's essentially the perimeter of a circle. But if you take a section of that, um, it, it's referred to as an arc, and you've probably heard that term before. You know, an arc is usually just a, you know, a, a rounded section, a rounded line. So same thing here in circles, it's an arc. And uh, when you cut a circle into an arc, you basically create a bigger one and a smaller one, unless you go right from the ends of the diameter. But in this case, if you look at our diagram, we've got a bigger arc and we've got a smaller arc. So the shorter arc is just called the minor arc. And the longer one is called the major arc. So there's a couple new terms for you. But where this comes into play with angles is what happens if we find the center of the circle and then we start attaching lines to where these arcs are. Uh, then we're, we're starting to create some angles, and as uh, uh, early geometrists, I mean like thousands of years ago, uh, started uh, discovering, uh, we could find some properties of angles inside circles that are very convenient. And uh, I remember taking this in university, it was called Euclidean Geometry, it was one of the hardest classes I took, so, but it was very, very interesting. So if you're, if you're looking for a challenging class and you're planning on going to university, try Euclidean Geometry. And uh, just as an aside, it, it's, sort of, uh, it's sort of weird that one of the most difficult classes that I took in my university career was a class about mathematics that had been discovered thousands of years ago. Uh, in any case, let's continue. The angle formed by joining the end points of an arc to the center of the arc, that's called a central angle. So I'll just point to this. That's the central angle. So if you look at where our arcs are, there's our... Uh, excuse me, there's uh, the end points of our arc, and the end points of the arc is for both the major arc and the minor arc. You can say the major arc um, starts at A and ends at B, and you can also say the same thing for the minor arc. It starts at A and ends at B, just going the opposite direction. Wherever those meet in the middle, okay, so the center of the circle, that's referred to as a central angle. So we're referring to this angle right here as the central angle. And then the angle formed by joining the end points of the arc to a point on the circle. So in this case, it's up here, but it could have been anywhere. It could have been here, it could have been here. It doesn't matter as long as it's, as long as it's uh, uh, joined to the outside of the circle, the circumference of the circle. Uh, that's called the inscribed angle. So uh, the angle formed by joining the endpoints of an arc to a point on the circle is an inscribed angle. And you can have more than one. You can have more than one. For instance, as long as it starts at A and B, it's an inscribed angle, so I could actually have another inscribed angle going right here. And we'll deal with some more situations, um, including multiple inscribed angles later, but I just wanted to make you aware that it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, directly central to your arcs. It could be anywhere on the circle. So the inscribed and central angles of this circle are subtended by the minor arc AB. Okay, you've probably seen the words arc and major, minor, and central and angle before. Maybe inscribed's a new one. Uh, but I, I doubt you've ever seen the word subtended before. Okay, so subtended, oops, sorry, let's get my pen here. Subtended basically means that these angles here, okay, are made because of the arc between A and B. So any angles, whether it be central or inscribed, any angles formed because of this minor arc AB, we say those angles are subtended by the minor arc AB. And once again, it doesn't matter. Maybe I had maybe I had this other one over here again, and that central or sorry, that inscribed angle there would also considered be considered subtended by this minor arc. So you can have more than one angle subtended by the minor arc, uh, but that is probably a new um, word for you, so just make sure you understand. So when I refer to subtended, you know I'm meaning just the angles that are contained because, or created because of this minor arc. All right, here's a couple of things we know about angles in circles. In a circle, the, me the measure of the central angle 
subtended by an arc. See, now there, there's where this type terminology is coming into play, right? It's a lot of words, but you got to understand what they mean. Let's just go one by one. In a circle, the measure of a central angle. Okay, so this is the minor arc here, is P to Q, okay? So the central angle has to be the lines that go to the middle. So that goes to the middle, so our central angle, I'll just put CA, is this one right here. Okay, so in a circle, the measure of a cent central angle subtended by an arc, boom, is twice the measure of the inscribed angle. Okay, so this is the inscribed angle because it goes from the points on the circumference for the minor arc, and then you notice that both of those lines go to the same spot on the edge of the circle. So this is the inscribed angle. I'll just call it IA for now. Okay. And what that means is this central angle is always twice as big as IA. Okay. So in this case over here, it says POQ is two times PRQ. So if you just look at the, instead of using the letters, if you use it, what I put, the uh, central angle here, so CA, okay, is two times as big as the IA. Remember, they found all this out like thousands of years ago. I can't remember exactly when Euclid lived, but it was a, it was a heck of a long time ago. And what that also means, okay, so if this angle is twice as big as this angle, it also means that that angle is half as big. So you could say it two ways. You could also say that the, uh, that the inscribed angle is one half the size of the central angle. So that's one thing we know. Thanks. Here's another thing we know. Now, let's say we've got a central angle. Okay, so I'm just going to identify it again here. This We've got a central angle right here, and we've got more than one inscribed angle. Okay, all of the inscribed angles are equal. As long as they start at P, hit the circle, and end at Q, it doesn't matter where it hits the circle, those are all equal, right? So all the inscribed, all the inscribed angles are congruent, which means equal, right? So that's another thing we know, which is a handy piece of knowledge. And by the way, these were all proved with mathematical proofs over the years. We don't, we're not going to worry about the proofs until, uh, you know, maybe uh, grade uh, 12, uh, I guess, foundations. It probably would be. But you, you're just going to have to take my word that we actually proved these. <laughs> we being mathematicians. I probably shouldn't group myself into the, the brilliant mathematicians. But uh, the... Two arcs formed by the endpoints of a diameter. Okay, now this, this, this picture got squished a little bit. But this line here is a diameter because it goes from one end of the circle to the other end of the circle through the midpoint. If you have a, uh, a subtended arc, sorry, this is an arc here. This is, in this case, it's no, they're, they're both sort of the major and minor arcs because one isn't bigger than the other one. And it wouldn't matter if this triangle was the other way. Um, so the angles subtended by this red arc with the central angle would be 180 degrees. It's just this line, right? A single line. And then the inscribed angle is this one right here. Now, what we know about a diameter as a central angle is that the inscribed angle is always going to be 90 degrees. So that's helpful. Once we see that, we can start thinking about uh, Pythagoras again, right? Because we have a right angle triangle. So the two arcs. So uh, two arcs formed by the um, oops, semicircles. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> two arcs formed by the endpoints of diameter are semicircles. So when you can't figure out which ones, like I said, they both could be major, they both could be minor because they're exactly the same. We just call it a semicircle, which just means half a circle, right? So the central angle of each arc is a straight angle, and a straight angle, like I said, it's just a line, 180 degrees. And then the inscribed angle, this is the important part for Pythagoras, is the inscribed angle of a semicircle is 90 degrees, so that's where we can start thinking Pythagoras again. And this down here just, just says basically the same thing. It's just, it doesn't matter how many of these angles are formed within that circle, and within that line subtended by AB, they're all 90 degrees. As long as AB is a, is a uh, diameter, okay, as long as AB is a diameter, doesn't matter 
which angles you form for inscribed angles or where you form them, they're always going to be 90 degrees. So that's a very handy, handy sort of, uh, I guess it's not a postulate, it's a theorem. Um, okay, up here. This is just, you know, the terminology we've been using the entire the, the entire time. It's just a different way to say it. The angle inscribed, so the inscribed angle of a semicircle is a right angle. We know that. Example, let's use a couple of these. Point O is at the center of a circle, and then we got all sorts of lines. So this these lines might not all be the same property, but let's let's look at what we've got and what we need to find out. So we know O is the center, and basically none of these work if O isn't the center. Okay? We have to determine the values of x degrees and y degrees. So x degrees is up here, and y degrees is down here. So what we need to, to know is how can we relate this 55 degree angle to x degrees? Okay, I know they're equal. So angle X, uh, sorry, that's not angle X, that's uh, angle A, B, uh, A, B, B, sorry, angle A, D, B equals angle A, C, B, angle A, C, B, and both of those equal 55 degrees. Now, how do I know that? Well, let's go back up. This okay, is the central angle, Y, or uh, A, O, B, Y degrees is the central angle, and CB, okay, CB is, CB, A forms, I'll just label these things and make it a little easier. That's the minor arc, right? Central angle is the, is the Y degrees, okay, and then we've got two inscribed angles, because they start and end A, D, B, and then also A, C, B. They start at A and end at B, or start at B and end at A, it doesn't matter. So we've got two inter or inscribed angles. So there's one, and there's the other one. And then we have rules about this. So which one is the rule that deals with inscribed angles being equal? All right, so let's roll back up a page. And it's not the first one, it's the second one, okay? So all inscribed angles subtended by the same arc are congruent. So this would be the inscribed angles property. I'll just refer to it as I, A, P. So how do we know this? Okay, I'm just going to put in brackets here, I, A, P, because that was the internal, or the, um, uh, that was the inscribed angles property, which tells us that this is the same. And it's already been proven. So we just have to refer to the, uh, to the inscribed angles property when we're saying, I know that these three things are equal. Okay, or two things, sorry, are equal. Now let's deal with y. Now we have a uh, we have a property that deals with the central angle and the uh, any inscribed angle, and that rule was that the central angle is half of the inscribed, or sorry, is two times the inscribed angle. So. Um, y is going to be twice as big as X, and Y is also going to be twice as big as this angle over here, ACB. So I'm going to write that out here. I'm going to write angle AOB, so that's AOB, equals two times, okay, angle ADB equals two times 55, which gives us a final of 110 degrees. Now, how do I know that? Again, we have to point to something to say, well, this is how I know that. You can't just sort of start pulling things uh, willy-nilly and saying, I know this, I know this, unless you can point to something that's been proved before in the history of mathematics that says, you can point to this, and we proved it. And it's this one, central angle and inscribed angle property. What would that be? C-A-I-A-P. And this is the one that says our central angle is twice the measure of our internal or inscribed angles. Sometimes I call them internal angles, but I shouldn't. They're inscribed angles. Uh, I, gotta, I forgot that acronym. I got to go back again. C-A-I-A-P. C-A-I-A-P. So this one here is because of C-A-I-A-P. That property is how we can prove that. So we figured out what X are and Y are. And you really didn't have to do any math. You just had to do some thinking and then refer to the properties. So there, you know, there isn't the traditional uh, operations of addition, subtraction. I mean, I guess, I guess we had some multiplication there, but it's more just um, identifying which angles are going to be equal and which angles are related to others based on what we know about these properties. 
Okay, now there will be some more math because, like I said, where, where we find 90 degree angles and triangles, you know we're going to run into Pythagoras eventually. So, so let's have a look here. So the rectangle, now we got a rectangle, ABCD has its vertices on a circle with radius 8.5 centimeters. The width of the rectangle is 10 centimeters. Okay, we got that right here. And what is its length? Okay, so I'm just going to put an X here because that's what I'm trying to figure out is what is X? And it's a rectangle, so this is also, oops, this is also 10, and this would also be X. Okay, so we said it's a rectangle, and by definition, uh, the lengths and the widths on each side of a rectangle are the same. So I'm just going to label that in there as something we know. Um, we're also getting to that point where we might not need every piece of information, so let's just carefully consider what we need, what we're trying to find out, and then we ignore the stuff that we don't need. We're trying to figure out what the length <clears throat> is. So we care about x. So what we should probably do is try to find a way to um, try to probably try to find a way to make that uh, an inscribed angle or a central angle or something of um, something of that nature. So we've got C going to the center. We've got C going to the center of the circle and it's a rectangle so we can draw a diagonal line from one side of the triangle or sorry one side of the circle diameter that's what i'm looking for the uh the the diameter starts at c and ends at a and goes through the middle so what we have there is 180 degrees because it's just a straight line that goes through the middle well that makes this a diameter and if that's a diameter then we know that this angle is 90 degrees so we can use Pythagoras to solve this one if we want but first we kind of have to prove how we know that so we go COA okay so angle COA is uh, 180 degrees and then I can just put in you know it's a dia uh, uh, diameter okay and then I'm gonna include these little dots you could say so C, B, or C, D, A is 90 degrees. These three dots just mean therefore. And it's usually what you use when you're sort of, hey, I proved this, or sorry, I know from this line, I know something else here. So this is sort of the first statement. COA is, is a diameter. Therefore, okay, I know something else. So I use those three dots, and uh, you, you can start using them too. You probably won't run into them again until grade 11 or 12, but... Uh, but it just, it's handier than writing out there for. Anyway, the point was COA is 180 degrees. So CDA, therefore angle CDA is 90 degrees. And how do we know that? This was, I believe the last property. This is angles in a semicircle. So ASP, I'll put just to shorten it, ASP. So that was the angles of semicircle property. Now, <clears throat> We've got a triangle, okay? So line CA, I'm just writing down everything we know here. Line CA, so the one that goes all the way through that diameter, we know that the radius is 8.5, so the diameter okay, is going to be 2 times 8.5. So angle, or sorry, line CA is going to be 8.5 centimeters times 2, which is 17 centimeters, because CA was a diameter. So now we can use Pythagoras because we have enough information. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And what do we know? Um, we'll call CD as A, all right? So A equals 10. B equals, we don't know. So that's going to be our X, okay? And then C is going to be, remember, the hypotenuse C is always draws, you know, an arrow away from the 90 degree angle. And uh, that's going to be 17 centimeters. So C equals 17 centimeters. So we've got a right angle triangle and we've got two of the sides. So we know we can solve for the third. So let's do it. So A squared is 10 squared plus B squared we don't know. And then C squared is going to be 17 squared. So that's 100 plus B squared. You're going to get very good at uh, using Pythagoras by the end of this course. Uh, what is 17 squared? I believe that is 289. So we got to subtract the 100 from both sides. And we're left with B squared equals 189. 
<clears throat> okay, now we don't want b squared, we want b, so we've got to do a square root to both sides, and we've got b equals, and then that's going to be a messy number, so I'm going to find the square root of 189, and that is 13.74. It says give it to the nearest tenth, so that's going to be 13 point seven centimeters and I believe that's the only question that uh, that there sorry that's the only thing that this question asked us to find was what is its length give the answer to the nearest tenth so uh, b equals uh, 13.7 centimeters so you know that's the same thing as x right I said b equals x up here so we know now that this is 13.7 centimeters okay but the only reason we were able to solve that is because we were able to use Pythagoras and the only reason we were able to use Pythagoras is because we used that angles of semicircle property to determine that we could make a right angle triangle um, to give us that 90 degree angle. Okay, now we've got uh, now we've got sort of four triangles here. We have the big one, and we got three little ones, and we've got center points. We've got all sorts of stuff, and it's going to ask us to find three different things. Okay, we're finding angles, so we don't need to worry about any side lengths. We're we're dealing with x, y. And Z, okay, where's X? X is central, Y, and Z. So what do we know? <clears throat> uh, angle AOB is 100. Okay, so that's a, that angle right there. And angle COB is 140. So let's start identifying um, where central angles might be and where, uh, let's see, where central angles might be and where inscribed angles might be. That will help us. We don't have any diameters. It looks like it's just radius or radii going to that center point O. Um, we do have a 140 degree angle here, which will be helpful. And uh, we also have, what else is going to be helpful? The 100 degrees. I think we might have to we might have to I can't just use the properties for this so let's use a little triangle knowledge that I think they're assuming you know this is actually a pretty tough question for grade 9 um, and that is that the interior angles of a triangle sum to 360 degrees now we didn't explicitly say that earlier um, I sort of think the textbook is assuming you know that but we're gonna spell it out here right now okay so um, here's one thing whoops here's one thing we know that wasn't explicitly explained in this in this uh, uh, unit, and that is the internal angles of um, of a triangle sum to uh, three hundred sixty degrees. Now, we I think most of us understood that or understand that the three external angles in a triangle all add up to um, I'll add up to 180 degrees, but I don't think it was necessarily co as common knowledge as they think that the internal angles of a triangle add up to 360. So that is something we know, um, possibly from elementary. I don't know, but we, I know we didn't do it in grade nine math so far, but we need that in order to, we can't just use the properties above. We need that in order to tell us what X degree is from there. We can kind of logic our way out of this. So we know that, uh, 360 degrees is going to whoops equal these three internal angles so that's going to be 100 plus 140 plus x so we can find out what x is knowing the rest of this stuff all right so 360 equals uh, 240 plus x then we get rid of the 240 that's 240 and what we end up with is x is equal to 120. so that helps us out right there um, because we knew this internal angles of a triangle sum to 360, which again, I think is maybe stretching a bit um, for grade nine, <laughs> we do know what X is. So we do know that X is 120. Uh, now, I think we got to logic this a little bit. And that means that we got to use radius, I think. So we know that these two lines are the same. Okay, we don't know how long they are because we're not dealing with any lengths. But if we look at, so that's just one thing we know is, is we found X. If we look at triangle AOC, so let's just look at triangle AOC. Okay, in triangle AOC, AO 
is the same length as CO. Okay. How do we know that? Because they're both they're both radius. And when you say two radius, they're radii, or more than two radius, they're radii. So because AO is the same distance as CO, because they're both radius, what this means is, so therefore, triangle AOC is isosceles. Again, this is, uh, I think this is a pretty tough question for grade nine. Um, AOC is isosceles. So if AOC is isosceles, these angles are equal. Okay, so I, I'm actually going to put another there for angle, uh, let's call it OAC, okay, is equal, OAC is equal to OCA. OCA. Okay, so if angle, OAC is equal to OCA, and we know, okay, let's put up what we know here, a triangle has angles that sum to 180 degrees, okay? That is something we know and we have discussed before in grade nine math. Because of that, we can set up an equation to figure out what Z is, because we know that this other angle is 120. So we know that the other angle is 120. We've got 180 degrees total is equal to that 120 degrees plus these other two angles. Now, because those other two angles are equal, we can say time plus two times Z, because this is also Z up here being the same. So now we can just solve this using regular, regular mathematical operations, right? So uh, really, it's the same thing as saying 180 equals 120 plus 2z, and then we can solve for the z. I don't like using z, they kind of look like 2s. So let's subtract the 120, subtract the 120, and what we're left with on this side is 60 equals 2z, and then we've got to divide by 2, and we're left with z equals 30 degrees. Okay, so we've solved for z now as well. We've got z is 30. Uh, Okay, we've got Z is 30, and we've got X is 120, and now all we've got to figure out is Y. Now, Y is a little different because we don't have a diameter. If we had, or sorry, we don't have, um, well, A, we don't have a diameter, but B, if we consider the 120 degrees, the central angle, we know that this angle is 240 degrees because, uh, oh, sorry, not 240, half, not twice. Sorry. We know that this whole angle here is 60 degrees because, remember, it's half of 120. But the problem here is we've got this line running through the middle, so we don't know what y is um, in relation to, you know, what's the angle on the other side of this. Well, we can sort of figure this out again using the exact same logic that we used before, okay? So if we think about it, BO is the same as CO because they're both radius, right? Or radii. So let's uh, let's do almost the exact same thing we did above, okay? A angle or triangle, this time it's just a different triangle. So this would be BOC, triangle BOC. Um, we've got, did I say BO is equal to CO? Same, same thing because they're both radii, okay? Therefore, this is a big question. Therefore, uh, triangle BOC is isosceles. Okay, it, it, if I didn't explain what isosceles is, I'm sure you've seen this before, but an isosceles triangle just has two sides that are, that are equal length. Okay, if you have all three sides of an equal length, then it becomes an equilateral triangle. So I'll just maybe make a little diagram here just to, just to remind people. If you've got two sides that are equal, it's isosceles. And then you know the angles are equal. Two equal sides, two equal angles, okay? And then if you've got all three sides the same, that is an equilateral triangle, okay? And then that means three equal sides and three equal angles. So I think you will have would have learned that before in elementary school, but that's just a little reminder. Of the, you know, these are two types of triangles. 
Uh, but uh, we are doing the exact same thing as we did above here. So we know that it's isosceles. So we also know that angle, just get, make sure I get the right angles here. Uh, B, sorry, uh, OBC and OCB. Angle, <laughs> what did I just say? OBC is equal to angle OCB. Okay, so if we know that, then we know that this angle here, let's draw two arcs. Okay, this angle here is the same as this angle here with our 180 degrees in a triangle. So 180 degrees in a, uh, in a triangle is going to be equal to the 140 plus, I need to call this something down here, um, this angle. So I'm just going to call this uh, N degrees or something like that. So that's going to equal 100, <clears throat> forgot again, 140, yeah. 140 degrees plus two times n, okay? Because, well, the exact same logic as above, so I'm not gonna re-explain it. Um, basically, we've got uh, 40 degrees equals two n, so n equals 20 degrees. We didn't get, it wasn't asking us for n degrees, it was asking us for y degrees, but the important part now is that we've got 20 degrees here, all right? So this, now we can use one of those properties right here, this arc, whoops, that minor arc, because it's less than 180 degrees, okay, so that minor arc, uh, AC, minor arc AC, that gives us central angle, and I should probably write this down in the question, central angle is AOC, okay, so central angle, AOC, is we determined 120 degrees. Therefore, we know, and I'd already said this, but angle ABC is an inscribed angle. So therefore, inscribed angle A, angle ABC is equal to half of that, right? half of that. And we had one of the properties to prove that. So this angle ABC is half of AOC. So we know the whole thing is 60. And we said that before, but our problem was, is that angle was kind of split into half because, uh, or into two angles because of that other line BO going to the center of the circle. But if we know that this little chunk here is 20, then we know that this chunk up here must be 40. Okay. Because it's 60 in total, right? So 60 minus the 20 we have equals 40 degrees equals the y. And we had to do a bunch of different logic and thinking to figure that out. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I think that the textbook is assuming that you know things that maybe you might have learned at some point in your math career but you probably haven't seen in a long time. So this, I think this is a very difficult question and I don't think there was a different way to solve it. There might have been, but it's not obvious to me. Um, but I, I think this is a difficult, a very difficult question requiring a lot, of, a lot of knowledge of triangles and angles and frankly, not using much of what we just learned. We just, the only time we used the properties was this minor arc, the central angle, and then getting this 61. Um, I guess what I'm saying is you can expect that you're not going to see a question as difficult as this on the exam. It's a good thought exercise. And if there's one that's kind of similar in the textbook, it's definitely a good idea to go through it. Uh, but you don't need to panic. You're not going to see something that involved on your quiz or your exam. All right. As always, if you've got any questions, shoot me an email. Um, do your best to do the practice questions in the text. I notice when people are doing poorly on certain uh, on certain uh, parts of the quizzes, it's usually because they didn't do the practice questions from the text. You can kind of tell from the answers in the quizzes who just watched the video and tried the quiz and who actually tried some of the practice questions. So um, I, I promise you, going through the text, the, the um, questions from the quizzes and the exams are going to line up pretty well with those practice questions. It really, really um, behooves you to attempt those and to send us an email asking for some clarification if you run into one of those textbook questions that's giving you trouble.
Uh, this is just a quick edit to the video. <laughs> I, I had another look at this question because I thought it was maybe a bit too difficult for, for the level that we're at. And I did notice one thing. If I go and just erase this, this is the thing that I didn't notice when I was looking at the question the first time. And I don't think it's all that clear, to be honest with you. It says that y degrees is actually this whole thing. You can see this line down here goes over top of the BO. So it was just asking what this whole thing was for y, and that's 60 degrees. And the reason we knew that was because of this, uh, the central arc. And we already, we already explained how we knew that this was 60 degrees, but it wasn't actually asking for this little chunk right there. It was saying y is the entire thing. So we didn't actually have to do, we didn't actually have to do two of these, right? We did one of these to figure out what z was, and we did need to do that. But we didn't have to do it twice to figure out what, what this little n degrees was here. It was asking for this whole thing. So, you know, we did it. And it's good because we now we, find, we found out this little angle down here as well as this little angle in here. But really, they were just asking, what's the whole thing, which is 60 degrees. So, um, you know, it's okay that we did it. We found out some more angles. Um, but let's just not call this, let's just not call this y. Let's just call that... So 40 degrees is, let's call that something different. Let's call that uh, uh, B or something like that. So B is 20 degrees. Oh, I already had that as N, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm all over the place. I'm all over the place. Sorry, we already had that as N degrees from over here. So that will continue to be N. And this little chunk here will be B. And then the whole thing will be Y. So just to be perfectly clear, after all this, we're going to say that the 40 degrees equals B and that the Y equals 60 degrees, okay, because of what we know about the central angle and the inscribed angle for the, <laughs> the minor arc AC, <laughs> subtended by the minor arc AC, using all of those. So we, we actually found, we found two more angles than we needed to, but we were correct in our calculations of those angles, so I think all is well. Okay, good luck.